Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, and it is going to be 45 today, which is a real heat wave here in Massachusetts, and so much of the rest of the country is flooded and still snowing and cold. We've got another storm coming in at the end of the week, so it's still indoor time with your dog for a lot of people. So one of the things I wanted to talk about today, hi Danny, um, we got these really cute bookends as um, a prize, well it was in the silent auction, at the Corgi Show. And see, it's just a plain flat bookend with a picture of a Corgi, a bunch of cute books that say like Dogs 101, K9, um, Puppies, spelled wrong, <laughs> and it has Welsh Corgi on the bottom and then it says um, the ever faithful companion around the edges in rainbow colors. So what I would like to propose today, you can buy these metal, just plain old bookends at a lot of stores, Walmart, Home Depot, I think even has them. And I think it would be a fun little project on a yucky day to get some pictures of your type of dog, even real photographs, and just glue them on to some of these uh, plain bookends and make yourself an adorable bookend that looks like your dog. And if you are artistic, you can make a stack of books like this and write things on it like, you know, Cairn Terriers, all you need to know, <laughs> or whatever breeds of dogs you have. Um, and, you know, you can even probably just use photographs if you don't have any artistic skill at all. Um, but it doesn't take much skill to make something that looks like the back of a book, even just a plain rectangle with cute little words scrolled on it would be good. Um, and of course, this corgi has glasses on. I'm not a huge fan of glasses on everything to be that hipster look, but you know, I would do the corgi without the glasses if I were re redoing this. And certainly you can just download pictures if you don't have, um, you know, pictures of corgis or whatever dog you have in some old magazines or something you can easily find really cute drawings online. Um, you might even find some corgi artist um, and you could download the whole picture without having to stack up books and maybe just put a pretty picture of a dog looking at the sunset on your bookends. But you know, in the old days, <laughs> I mean, you can just glue these on with Elmer's glue and they'll stick. Um, and if you are really crafty, you can take decoupage, which is this white stuff, and paint it on there to hold it together. But if you are a person who doesn't do that, they're fine just like they are. Um, one of the things I've done in the days when I couldn't decoupage was take packing tape and just wrap it around it and sort of like semi-laminate it that way. This one does have the picture on both sides, which, you know, this piece that's facing the box doesn't really need the picture on it. So you could put your packing tape crossovers on the back and then just have the nice side facing out. So it doesn't take much effort to do that. It's a fun project. Um, you could certainly just put lots of pictures of your own dogs on it, um, which of course you have and can easily print. And they don't have to be, you know, on the photographic paper to make a really cute bookend. They can just be on regular old printer paper. So. That's a suggestion for a little art project on a day when you are not spending time outside with your dog or if you are just uh, inclined to do crafts. Uh, and you know, these are great. You could even do some version of this and have like a little cooking dog and put your cookbooks around him in the kitchen um, or whatever, you know, use these around just your dog books. I have so many books in my house and they are crammed into bookshelves and I have a whole variety of book ends holding them up. So I haven't figured out exactly where to put these yet because they're so cute. I think I will end up putting them in my office on the top of a shelf that has um, children's books in it. Um, really cute ones like The Wind and the Willows. So that's probably where they'll go just so that you can get maximum view of the corgi cuteness. <laughs> And I was amazed in the silent auction, not very many people were bidding on these. And of course you can make something like it so easily yourself. I mean, those metal bookends are very inexpensive, um, but I am, you know, a person with a ton of books. And so I have an instant need for it and it matches my wonderful 
um, corgi picture I got from TJ Maxx that has a corgi well actually someone sent him to me as a corgi sitting by a pile of books so you know I could do a whole little corner of my house with this theme I even have a cup um, with a corgi sitting by a pile of books and they're all wearing these glasses <laughs> but I still love books and corgis so it's a perfect thing for me and like I said you can just any picture of your dog that you have just glue them on there and make some really cute bookends so that's our craft project suggestion for today it is a sunny day here I have um, a flower meadow at the side of my house that was planted by the prior homeowner and it is too gnarly to mow that and it has to be cut down every year around the spring and i do not want to go out there when there's any sign of wildlife like snakes so while there's still about this much snow which is today i've got to go out there with a hand chopper and whack all the old stalks from last year down so that the new flowers can get growth um, it's a miserable job i hate doing it it's very hard on my body but it, the flowers are so pretty so that's our plan for the afternoon after I go teach yoga here and there <laughs> what do you think biscuit and we need to practice our rally work this is becoming quite a project I am getting encouraging words from a champion rally person um, who was really grateful to T-Touch for the help it gave her so I am happy to have met her through an online community. 37, Danny, that's a heat wave. You're going to have to open the swimming pool up there in South Dakota. Although with all the flooding, your swimming pool might just get full, uh, you know, fill your backyard with flood water. God, we hope not. It's so bad. I can't, I just can't believe it. You know, the area I live in was flooded tremendously uh, in the 30s, I think it was. Um, and you know everything was underwater like miles I mean they had showed Nebraska this morning and the some houses that have about three feet of water high around them they've never seen floods and they're two miles from the river well this flooding on the Connecticut River there was an ice jam and it was blocking it up and then when that froze um, broke up the, it just flooded everywhere it was a tremendous problem in this area and there is a place maybe eight miles from the river that has um, a mark on the outside of the house that's over my head, so like it's five and a half feet at least, uh, of how high the water was there when that flood occurred. I mean, the entire downtown area of Northampton was underwater. It was an incredible flood. So I can imagine, um, you know, you think you're living in a safe area and suddenly your house is underwater for the first time since ever. So I hope everybody's safe. We will be back um, Thursday morning for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Biscuit, you feel hollow. We need to feed you more. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day.